I expect that you can already hear the barking of too many dogs. You can already tell there's dirt behind me and cobblestone. And that I only have diamond armor on. And that is because we're in my oldest Minecraft survival world. That I have created in Minecraft version 1.5. Which was the horse update. That was a long time ago. That's the version of Minecraft that I started playing in. And that is the version that this world was created in. Somehow I still have it, even now, with only minimal corruptions. And for those of you wondering, this is my 1,000 subscriber special video, a little bit belated, because I had to wait a while for the community tab to unlock so that I could do polls. But when I did do a poll, this was the option that got the most votes for the special video. So, here we are. I'm going to be giving you probably about a... 15 minute tour of this world now this world is gonna look a lot different from what you're used to seeing From me in minecraft because I built most of this world when I was about 12 and I've played on it very little since minecraft version 1.12 and so Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that is still old So I think that's part of what makes this world look cool is that a lot of the stuff here is old and not new and I actually, to make this the most interesting it can be, we're going to go to resource packs and we're going to enable the old Minecraft textures. So some of you may like this, some of you may not, but I still am not used to this world in the new Minecraft textures. I also am running Optifine, but I disabled fog so the nether also looks the same. And for the sake of this video, I spawned in an Elytra with Mending on Breaking 3 because I actually didn't have that on this world. So... I'll be removing this once I am actually done, but this was the Elytra I was using before, it's not very good. So, we're not going to be flying most of this time because when I built this world, I never imagined that I would be flying on it to begin with. Because, well, Elytras, I, I had them in this world, but you could only glide, like I didn't, I didn't play on this world too much where you could use rockets to fly. I mostly would just glide from some high points in this world down to low points and that was about all that I did with the elytra and then I put it in the chest for safekeeping after that. Well without further ado let's enable the replay mod so that we can get more cinematic captures of this and let's begin this tour. So my base here is pretty much built almost at the exact center of the world. As you can see we are a mere 200 blocks from spawn. I feel like the coordinates got a little bit changed with an update because I remember the exact zero zero being closer around here. Oh yeah, I had to add this stuff, I added this stuff a long time ago because all these locations are extremely far away because a lot of this stuff didn't generate until long after I created the world. So I had to go about 10 or 15,000 blocks. I didn't know the ice tunnels and nether tunnels and like portal linking and a lot of stuff existed. So this was my solution when I was 12. And a lot of this world is actually still decorated for Christmas because I stopped playing a lot on this world around Christmas time. Yeah, here is part of my army of way too many dogs. I'm sure most of us had this on some of our earlier worlds where we just have like way too many animals and pets and some of us probably still do. I generally don't bother with pets too much because usually they just die or they're loud. And in this case, they haven't died, but they're just very loud and they're all sitting here. So this was my very first part of my base in here. It's a two block tall ceiling room with the most mismatched carpet ever existing on it. Like, I just went carpet happy. Whatever colors I happened to have at the time, I just put them on the floor and I pretty much called it good. So, yeah, we've got the two block tall ceiling. I'm kind of claustrophobic. I have a brewing area over here. This is. I, I, I consider this to be very fancy when I built it. I've got a lot of potions left here. I forgot actually what the old potion textures looked like. I was excited to make lingering potions of instant damage too, so that's why we have so many of them. Maybe I'll just take one just for fun. This is my potion brewing supplies, some also mob heads and stuff that we got as well. And over here was just another miscellaneous sort of junk chest. We have cake still here. These crafting tables and furnaces were pretty much here since I created the world. I swapped out some of these blocks like with purple when 1.9 came around. And this was the first outside expansion that I ever built so that I could squeeze some carrots and literally one potato in here because my early game food source was really, really bad. I was extremely cobblestone wall happy and I've removed some of it since when I first had it, but I just had this place surrounded in walls. I was like, 
this is so cheap and nothing can go over it and I'm safe. So I just like covered everything in cobblestone walls. And I also got a little bit treehouse happy. This was the first treehouse I built over here over this very lovely cobblestone bridge with no stairs, no slabs, no nothing. I don't know. It served its purpose. And I built this treehouse and thought that was the coolest thing ever when I was like, I think I actually may have built this part when I was like nine or something. I played a lot on this world when I was about nine and also when I was about 12 and 13. I still, I, I have no idea how long this stuff has been here. This could have been here easily like five, six, seven years and I forgot that that was there. And as you can see, I lit up the bottom of this river over here with jack-o'-lanterns because I didn't have much glowstone and I had lots of pumpkins and sea lanterns weren't a thing when I did that. And that was pretty much the best solution I could come up with was to spam jack-o'-lanterns down here. Also, when I played on this world, I pretty much had the brightness set to moody. This is what my experience was for most of this world. This is pretty much what it looked like. I'm going to set it back to bright because this will look horrible in YouTube if I keep it like that. But yeah, I went down here and I put these here for the sake of being able to mine clay down here because I didn't venture very far afield to mine the clay. And I never would have imagined there would actually be fish swimming in here. Also, I didn't remove the kelp or the seagrass. There never was seagrass here. There probably never will be seagrass here. And I added so many different rooms to this treehouse. So many different layers. I just kept going as far as I felt like and wanted to with this treehouse here. It, it looks like really bad from sort of a more experienced Minecraft player standpoint, but it was really fun to run around in. And I always made sure to put chests and crafting tables and furnaces in almost every room because I wanted it, it to be functional. This also is like some sort of crazy like time capsule here that I have no idea how long all these little things have been here. I ate so many cookies. We'll look at my statistics later on this world as well, but I probably ate so many cookies on this world because I had wheat and I had cocoa beans and they mass produced cookies so I thought that was a good deal. There's not all that much over here. There are villagers here. I don't even remember how these guys got here. And for some reason when I run the programmer art like texture pack these guys get the weird green hoods and like just look weird. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah this just I don't I don't really don't know where these guys came from. I'm not sure how at what point these guys got up here. I'm gonna briefly put on this elytra so he can fly back. And you can get a slightly aerial view of this area. So I just put a lot of farms here because I didn't know about automatic farms. I'm not sure if there's a single automatic farm on this world. Actually, there's one, but I don't think it still works, and I'll show you that soon. But if we go back over here, back across the bridge. There's extremely small scale farms, like a little wheat farm, sugar cane, more potatoes, and stuff like that. There used to be so many animals in here until I scaled down the animal population. And, like, I just kept a couple of them because I didn't need them anymore, so I kept them more for decoration. You know, we've got a chorus flower farm. And I also have pretty much one of every single type of tree in this area as well. Because I just brought back anything I found from my adventures exploring far away. This was my first storage area, and I had all of five double chests here, and no wonder I ran out of space fast, but I had ready-to-eat food. Well, this was no, never that organized. Also, I never actually got that many golden apples, I think. Like, one time I may have spawned them in when fighting the wither, and then I just couldn't bring myself to chuck them in lava, so... We, yeah, we just don't talk about that, but... Over here, we've got a bunch of miscellaneous sort of food supplies, according to my labeling. That was supposed to be mechanisms, but that was like my eight-year-old self trying to spell that. So, in other words, this is redstone stuff and like stuff that seemed mechanical. So, yeah, a lot of old stuff there. This was stuff that I added more recently. You see, we've got Totems of Undying, Enchanted Books, Music Discs, a billion maps, and all that stuff. And, you know, this is my Arrow collection. I was pretty pleased with how much stuff I had here until I started playing in like Minecraft in a different way. And I realized that's not actually a lot of arrows. And then this is my iron chest. And I was so proud of this because this was all hand mine. I've never built an iron farm on this world ever because I didn't know that was a thing you could do. This was all hand mined iron. So I was so proud of that. But now I see a double chest of iron ingots. I'm like, eh, I wish it was iron blocks. That's like my mentality now. 
And that was my richest chest. You know, we've got some gold and a lot of hand mine diamonds. Those are all hand mine. A lot of it without even Fortune 3. A lot of it was, but about half of that probably wasn't using Fortune 3. And, you know, we've got another star, but nothing too exciting. I added an automatic little system here that would take anything from a minecart with a hopper and it would put it in that hopper and it would unload it and dump it into here and I was like oh my gosh this is so good this is like the worst redstone ever this is literally just a dropper tower that went into that chest and down here if we go down here even more there is a super fast clock circuit these things still are really powerful like it's so fast Although it's probably not as good as an observer clock, those are simpler now, but this was really good before observers existed. And now we're in a gigantic tower. I'm going to sort of gloss over a lot of this because this was just another storage room that I had. You know, we've got a bunch of other random junk in here, a lot of blocks. Some of that's not junk, but a decent amount of it is. That was extra ore and armor that I had. And I think this might be the final level where I had stuff. Yeah, I didn't actually fill up all this tower. And if we make our way to the very top here, I think pretty soon there's an enchantment table there, there's a brewing stand, and now we're at this level. And this is the tower I jumped off of to glide with my elytra before rockets exist. And we're actually going to put it on now. And as you can see, I built this galleon ship here. This was very, very heavily like copied from one of those old like Minecraft building handbooks that showed how to build a ship. That's a lot of how I learned how to build ships to begin with, but if we look out over here, I've never actually looked at this world with this high of a render distance before. I've never seen this much of it at once. You can see all of this ocean is completely devoid of any kelp and seagrass because it was generated so long ago. You can see some corrupted terrain over there. That happened in the 1.7 update, I believe, when tons of new biomes were added. You can see more corrupted terrain over there. And there's more off in the distance in that direction. If I went over here and I flick that, this... Yeah, that still works. It just shoots tons and tons of fire charges off into the distance. That was so satisfying to do. I may have spawned in the fire charges because it's like they're expensive to make and I didn't know how to mass produce them. So I may have spawned them in. I actually did have fire charges pointing in that direction along with a TNT cannon, although I never really used it too much. Let's test this and see if this still even works. Again, I remember a while back in an update, TNT cannons stopped working for the most part. I'm assuming this isn't going to blow anything up. I think the principle is still the same. Yeah, that used to shoot so far. I mean, we actually got a squid somehow, but remember when that was like completely full of TNT, it would just be going off into the sunset. I mean, if there's, there's not a sunset, but it would go really far. And now it just doesn't. Oh yeah, more corrupted terrain over there. This is pretty much the only automatic farm I ever had, and it doesn't really work anymore. This was the design that I copied from the Redstone Handbook, one of those old books. And it was an automatic chicken farm that either could produce cooked chicken or raw chicken. And I survived off this thing for so long, but I don't really think it works anymore. Oh, that's the back of that chest. Never mind. We've got the nether portal there. We'll take a look at the nether in a little bit, but I want to kind of show you... A few of the things in this direction first because there's not quite as much over here you know we've got the galleon ship but then we've got this village and I completely created this village from scratch and honestly I think it's completely messed up now as of the 1.14 update like all these villagers lost their OP trades that I had and everything but you can tell this was made in early versions of Minecraft because the amount of doors that are here and the door spam Remember the door spam before you could just use beds? Well, this was back when doors were actually how you made villagers breed. So, the amount of doors here is probably, like, staggering. And there's probably hundreds of doors there. Also, if you were to run across this and stand perfectly still here, you might actually get hit by those arrows. Which is something that actually spiders have done before and they've actually died. So, that was very satisfying when I saw that. But over here is my stables. This is a newer edition when... I got into getting horses and llamas and stuff like that. I got so into making llamas and like having llamas with different carpets and stuff. It seems so cool when that came out. I think that was 1.12 maybe. That I have a lot of llamas over here. And we've got the best spiral staircase ever into a loft with nothing but. 
You can probably see another castle like structure in this direction over here as well and that is the second village that I ever found on this world. And this served me very well. I also was able to repopulate it after it almost having all of its inhabitants destroyed by zombies. But it actually got repopulated in the end. I may have removed some of the doors here. I think I may have removed all the doors that I had. But these there used to be like literally no normal walls. But I actually think I fixed the doors and everything. How are you guys breeding? There's like no beds here. This was a build that I actually tried to make look nice, and I think I succeeded for my abilities at the time. I built a big farming area because I already totally didn't already have farms over there that were plenty big, but I built even bigger farms, so don't judge, but <laughs> I didn't know about automatic farms, so this was my solution. I built this big farming area and a big barn out of, I think that's like red terracotta probably because concrete wasn't a thing. So we've got like all the different animals and crops and things. I'm pretty sure some of this is beetroot. That's uh, carrots, I think, that's potatoes. There's beetroot around here somewhere, I'm pretty sure, because I wanted to farm everything. And, oh yeah, here's the beetroots. I don't know why I even grew these. I mean, I guess because I just wanted to farm everything. And also, it seemed like a good way to use grass paths. Like when that got added, that was cool. So I was like, I'm going to make grass paths, and they're actually going to be paths, yay. And this taiga was generated here, not because it's near all a bunch of other snowy biomes, but because this world was made when snowy biomes and warm biomes and tropical biomes and normal biomes could all generate wherever they felt like near each other. And I honestly, I still like that kind of Minecraft generation. I still wish it wasn't grouped by, like, heat, but yeah, this is one of those old snowy taigas where it didn't actually snow or it didn't accumulate snow. The snow that generated was just a one-time thing. And so this doesn't actually put snow down. It's technically, yeah, this world is actually just, this is just called a taiga. This wasn't even called a snowy taiga. This was straight up the taiga. There was no non-snowy taiga. I forgot about that. That's insane to think about. I completely forgot that there were no normal taigas. So this was the original taiga that generated. And we're going to go into spectator mode shortly. But this was my first mining base. And this also is sort of another, I don't know, I'd call it a time capsule chest where most of this stuff has been here for so long. It just looks like an old Minecraft kind of inventory that you might see. I remember going across over here and let's go into survival mode. Now I remember being around here somewhere, I was like right here, this looks a lot different now than it did before, but I remember coming across this bridge, looking down, seeing lava, and seeing redstone in the corner, and that was the first time I ever found redstone. That was such a cool experience, but now this has all been completely hollowed out. I'm just going to say right now, none of this was mined with a haste 2 beacon. I didn't know that you could do insta mining in this game. At the time of mining this, none of this was mined with haste too. And there's still a lot of cobblestone. A lot of this was actually like I burned the cobblestone because I didn't realize you should keep it at the time. But I've also used ton of, a ton of the cobblestone that was here in the process of making other things. So some of this is still here, some of it is gone and used in other buildings. But now let's go a little bit farther afield and I'll explain some of my slightly newer and farther explorations and we'll go to the nether so if we go over here we end up at another village this was the first village i ever found in minecraft that's not a joke i found this and i didn't even know this was a thing but when i did find this i was like whoa and so i took measures as fast as i could to build a simple cobblestone wall like literally using a cobblestone wall around the village to protect it from zombies and stuff but i did have to do some repopulating of villagers as well here and this was the house that I used as my base of operations in the village. And yeah, there's a lot of junk here. The villagers have taken over my beds. These are also original red beds. These were never anything other than red beds. They were just called beds. And now they would be called red beds, which is kind of sad. But yeah. So this mountain area right here is a project that I worked on for a long time. And it took me like probably a couple months to do. But I was super happy with how it turned out. I think it's really cool. And there's a hidden button around here, right there. If we go over there, there is, I think that's a Jeb door. I think that's what that's called. I could be wrong, but I seem to remember that being called a Jeb door. And there's like 
this temple thing that I built in here using some of the new blocks, the polished andesite and diorite as floors and there's a lot of different things I built in here. I was especially proud of this area because like I kind of made like a sun down here and then like a sky, I don't know. It just looked really cool. I was sort of just building stuff that looked interesting. And if we go over here, there's like um, various entrances to rooms. There's this dining room. There might actually be food in here. No, there's not. There's just a ton of wool. And there's more rooms over here. I think there's like different little bedrooms and sleeping areas and stuff like that. I'm not sure what's over here. Oh, there's a fountain. I forgot that I put this here. That's pretty neat. And then there's also an upstairs here. And if we go over here, there's a kitchen. There might actually be stuff. No, I actually didn't put anything here. I kind of thought I did. I think I may be remembering something else, but... We also have a library, and you do not know how long it took me to make these bookshelves. I remember when bookshelves were so hard to make and so expensive, like leather. Like, getting that much leather was insanely difficult, but now it's not too hard. There's actually a mansion that I built up here on this ridge, and... Yeah, I copied this exactly from the Builder's Handbook, one of like the first ones that came out. Because I thought it looked really cool, and I still think it looks cool. It's such an old style of Minecraft building. I honestly still think it looks nice. If nothing else, just for nostalgia, you know. This oak trap doors around glowstone is such a classic. And I actually fully furnished this house, which was kind of cool as well. So I basically made this um, interior whatever I wanted. I didn't follow any designs with the interior here. So there's like a little bit of a mini storage area. This was leftover building materials. You can go over here actually. Let's see if we can electro jump this. And we did actually electro jump that. Nice. And over here is the living area. We've got a dining room over here. And I almost burned down the whole mansion one time with this fire. And then I was able to actually contain it. So I didn't have to worry about the mansion getting burned down. But here's the kitchen, and which I think is kind of cool. And then, of course, there's a gigantic balcony and everything over here. So, yeah, that's pretty much this mansion that I built. And now, if we were to go in this direction over here, we actually come across the first stronghold. Now, I remember first setting out to find the stronghold and being like, Oh, it's probably 10,000 blocks away. I'm never going to find it. And then all of a thousand blocks from my base over there. The Eye of Ender went down right here. And you can see the stronghold is actually here. This was the first ever stronghold I ever found. There's the end portal. And it's giving me an advancement. Because, yeah, game updates. But Well, we're back at my actual base here in the overworld still. Because that's about all that I think is interesting to show off for the showcase in the overworld. Now... We have the nether that is still something that I want to show you guys. I also could go to some of these locations. I'm trying to remember if there's anything actually cool here. I think these were places that I actually found, like, just by running or walking or maybe flying with the elytra. And then I wanted to get back and forth quickly. And I didn't know about um, nether shortcuts and stuff. So I had these command blocks. So there's a woodland mansion about 15,000 blocks away. A lot of these are really far, actually. Why did it create a new portal? There's literally a portal right here. Okay, well, I don't know what Minecraft is doing there, but this is the portal that generated, and it, this place is bigger than it was before because I enlarged it, but it was a really, really tiny cave. Also, that gas is so loud. And animals came through my portal. You noticed I have a cat that seems to have infinite fire resistance here. I'm not really sure how, but I've also just got a cat there. And I had to dig in this direction, and I think I died in lava at least once digging in this direction to get into the main nether. And if you're wondering why this is completely built out of obsidian, it's because I didn't know cobblestone was gassed fireball proof. Yep, I figured that out after I made this out of obsidian. So I have a literal obsidian bunker. It's pretty small, but that took like three hours probably to mine with an unenchanted diamond pickaxe. Yeah, I didn't know that I need anything different. And I have probably the worst staircase ever going down here to the rest of the nether because it took me so long to figure out how to get down there because I didn't want to die of fall damage even though it really wasn't that far. If we go over here, there's like this passageway. There's way too many trap doors. And then there's a ladder down to this area here. Well, that was an extreme close-up. 
And then we have this. And this place is honestly extremely beat up because for fun, I would just come down here and aggro all the zombie pigmen because they actually were zombie pigmen back then. And then I would just fight hordes of zombie pigmen. And then gas would spawn, so that's why it's all completely blown up with, like, craters and fire. But this was really fun to do. I even built an entire pathway for a horse or a donkey that would lead to my first nether fortress. And so if we go all the way in this direction... I don't I still haven't found a fortress closer than this this was the closest fortress I could find it's like 500 blocks away it took me so long to find it which slowed down my game progression a ton when I was first playing on this world like if we go up here I think the fortress is close by I think you can see this is all plenty big enough for a horse or a donkey to go through so that I could transport more materials because I didn't really use shulker boxes too much yeah, and here's the fortress. This is the tiny little bit of it that I found. And, of course, I'm getting an advancement. But if we go into spectator mode, there is my first blaze spawner. Yeah, this was the first blaze spawner I found. You see, I have, like, a giant bunker here because I didn't know how to fight them very well. So I would camp in here shooting arrows at the blaze, and I'd make a mad dash for the blaze rod and pick it up before the blaze would start, like, trying to kill me again. But then once I actually got blaze rods, I made fire resistance, and then it was a lot easier. But I straight up haven't even found a 1.16 biome in the nether. Even though I've been on here a few times in 1.16, I haven't actually found one. So that's interesting. <laughs> I may never find a 1.16 biome here, honestly, and that's okay. Ah, there we go. Here we are. And luckily, this spawned inside the end stone for me. I was really scared of having to like bridge over the void because I really was not good at bridging I didn't want to do that but you can see there's trees here and there's several other things here I built this bunker that was supposed to protect me from the ender dragon but then I didn't realize that the ender dragon would just break a lot of it well it would break the windows it actually wouldn't break the end I also made some farms here I made a cobblestone generator which I thought was neat and oh it actually has an auto collection system I completely forgot I don't even know where that goes Oh, that goes over there. That's actually cool. I didn't know I made that. I forgot about that. I made a tiny farm here. I made a tree farm. I just wanted to have the ability to live here if I ever wanted to. And also, look at how many gateway portals there are. I think that there's the maximum number of gateway portals here. Because I killed the ender dragon so many times. And you're also probably noticing that there is a bunch of extra pillars that shouldn't be here. Because, obviously, I beat the Ender Dragon the first time around before 1.9. So, there's the old pillars that generated, not in the circle. And then there's a new one. So, there's actually twice as many pillars here as there should be. I also mentioned we'd look at statistics later. And so, I think now is a good time to look at statistics. Also, if you guys want me to show you some of the more smaller Easter eggs or stories and stuff on this world... um. I could always do a live stream of that. I'm just not going to put every little thing into this video. Otherwise, it'd be like three hours. I want to keep it to roughly minimum in this. But if you guys are interested in learning any more about my thing or some of the um, other Easter eggs or smaller things on my world, you can let me know if you want to live stream that down in the comments because that is something we could do sometime. So here is some of my statistics. This is the general statistics. 15,000 chests open, damage dealt, uh... 380,000 hearts to damage. Wow. That's a lot. I've only taken 34,000 hearts to damage. That's pretty crazy. Distance climbed. 39 kilometers climbed. Distance sprinted. <laughs> 800. Distance flown. 1,000. Distance walked. 1,600 kilometers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Distance walked underwater. 71 kilometers underwater. What is this? Yeah, so that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Oh my gosh, um, a lot of these things, newer things like distance by strider is zero. Interaction is brewing stand over a thousand, good grief. 2,800 crafting table interactions. Those are all the new blocks, so. <laughs> jumps, 460,000 jumps, good grief. Doesn't have any statistics for, oh wait, no, that's 23 days apparently. I feel like it should be more than that. I don't know. Either way, um, that's a lot. What about items? So, that's times mine, times working, times crafted, times used. Uh, times mined, 100,000 cobblestone, it looks like, or stone. 
that's a lot. <laughs> uh, if we look at the iron pickaxe statistics, that'll actually probably have more than diamond. Yeah, 100,000 times for the iron pickaxe, because I actually used more iron pickaxes than diamond to mine out all the stuff, because for a lot of the time I was on this world, mending was extremely hard to get, or, like, just non-existent. So, yeah, there's only 54,000 diamond pickaxe uses. A lot of more stuff, uh... There's another big thing. Time's probably placed or used or something. It's a lot for cobble, so some pretty decent statistics here. What about mobs? 28 bats, 600 blazes, 57 cave spiders, 1,700 chickens. Oh my gosh. Uh, died to creepers five times. Elder guardians, endermen, endermites, evokers, ghasts, guardians. Guardians have killed me. Magma cube killed me, apparently. Uh... Never been killed by a parrot. Why would I have killed the parrots? I have zero memory of killing the parrots. Huh. That's a lot. Uh, 3,800 skeletons. 2,000 spiders. Oh my gosh. Which killed me one time. I've killed 6,000 zombies. 11 zombie villagers. And 7,000 zombified piglins. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, I think that's a pretty good look at our statistics. Now, let's continue on. So as we stand here on the highest point that I ever built manually on this world, we can look out at the rest of the world here. And I also turned on the normal textures now, and I honestly still prefer it in the old Minecraft textures, but that's probably just because that's all that I'm used to. Because I never played on this world really with the new textures except for a tiny bit in the newer updates. So I was just used to this world with all the old cobble textures, the old wheat textures. I still much prefer the old wheat textures, to be honest. I really don't like the new ones, but you know what? It is what it is. Anyways, I think that concludes my tour of the oldest Minecraft survival world I possess. You know, it got corrupted sometimes, but the corruption could have been way worse. All that really happened was weird biome borders that resulted in cliffs like that. You know, it kind of just adds visual interest to the world, in my opinion, but... Well, the sun is rising here, and I've never turned shaders on in this world. That's something I've never done before. Let's turn on shaders as we admire the sunrise on my oldest Minecraft world. Oh my gosh, my frames are instantly dying, but that looks really nice. I really like the way that looks. I, this world looks so cool even with shaders on. I'm not getting good frames because my render distance is still so high up, but I like this. Anyways, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that tour, and if you have any questions about it or anything like that, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this 1,000 subscriber special, then consider leaving a like and, I guess, subscribing so that there will be a 2,000 subscriber special or maybe a 5,000. You never know what might happen in the future but thank you guys all so much for 1000 subscribers i think we're actually at 1200 by now so but a more appropriate thing to say would be thank you for 1200 subscribers and it means a lot and hopefully we will continue to grow over the course of however long i do youtube i'm not sure how long but i have no plans to stop or quit anytime soon or at all i honestly don't know it's just going to be something that i figure out as we continue to move forward with the channel but anyways guys, uh, thanks for watching this video, I've been Speef, and this has been my oldest Minecraft survival world that I still possess. Bye guys.